Hey guys, and welcome back to Captain Jasper. For any of you new to our channel, I'm Laura, an animal behavior and welfare graduate, specializing in rabbit behavior and care. Today I thought I'd talk about the science behind animal training and how we all learn. Yes, that's right, I'm talking about conditioning styles. There are so many different ways in which animals learn, but two main fields are classical and operant conditioning. These subjects are crucial to understand if you want to go into a job training animals or if you want to study animals. So I thought I'd go through the definitions of each subject, along with some real life examples of how they're used in our training and learning processes. You've read. <laughs> okay, he's just woken up from his nap. Oh, you're so cute. Look at you. You've been so good. Where was I? I can't remember where I was. Hang on. Processes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Before we continue, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to join our crew. And don't worry if you're here for our rabbit related content, there'll be a bunny related video later this week. Classical conditioning is defined as an involuntary response to external stimuli. Classical conditioning was discovered by a Russian psychologist called Ivan Pavlov. Pavlov was studying salvation, digestion and involuntary responses in dogs before he proved the theory of classical conditioning. He noticed dogs would salivate at the sight of food, which is described as an unconditioned response. He tested his theory of classical conditioning by ringing a bell when feeding them over a period of time, and then removed the food and just rang the bell. The dogs salivated just at the sound of the bell, indicating an involuntary response, or a conditioned response to external stimuli. The dogs had begun to associate the bell sound with being fed and the bell was now considered a conditioned stimuli. I will go through definitions and examples for conditioned stimuli, unconditioned stimuli, conditioned response, and unconditioned response in another video. Some examples of classical conditioning in my own rabbits are me opening the fridge. They know where their lettuce is kept, and as soon as they hear the fridge open, they prick their ears up and lick their lips in anticipation of food. A crinkly bag is another big one for most of my pets, even my chickens. When a bag crinkles in this house, I have a mob of salivating animals on my hands wanting food. Operant conditioning is defined as an animal or human making an association between a behaviour and a consequence, whether negative or positive. And in turn, the behaviour either increases if the association is positive, or decreases if the association is negative. Operant conditioning plays a huge role in how we train animals. Not that classical condition doesn't and they can be used simultaneously to enhance learning. But operant conditioning really teaches animals and humans what behaviours are good and what behaviours are bad. And it isn't an involuntary response, but a voluntary one. Operant conditioning is composed of a quadrant. Positive reinforcement. An example of positive reinforcement in action would be teaching your dog every time they sit on command they get a treat, which in turn strengthens the behaviour. Basically you are adding something positive to strengthen the behaviour. Negative reinforcement. Removing something unpleasant to strengthen the behaviour. An example would be turning down your music to a quieter setting to calm your bunnies down. Positive punishment is adding something such as command like no or something more physical such as tugging your dog's lead back when they are pulling, to try and stop the bad behaviour, teaching them that that behaviour is undesirable. Negative punishment is removing something unpleasant as a result of a bad action, so with children taking away their access to a TV or phone if they are naughty or grounding them. An example with rabbits is if they start chewing on something they shouldn't, you remove the item. Both styles of learning have way more to them than this, but these are just some basic definitions I thought may help you if you're interested in studying animal behaviour, are looking to go into a job training animals, or you're just more curious to know the science behind how we learn. Next time you train your animal, try and identify the style that you're using. I'll be doing more on the subject of orthology and animal training in upcoming weeks, so stay tuned. But later this week will be more bunny content, don't worry.